thy light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you amplified says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new life are we blessed i'm saying all this so that the lord will by this teaching alongside others plant in us a hunger for exact spiritual growth this shadow boxing of trying principles here and there when we are confronted with issues most the average believer please look up listen to me the average believer does not know which key to apply when faced with challenges so as to command victory so the typical believer the typical church goer will begin to engage all kinds of things blood of jesus holy ghost fire communion offering and just shadow box them here and there in hope that one will walk and truly one will walk and the danger is because it did not come by mastery you will fear your result because you are sure that you cannot reproduce it again but paul said he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he thrives lawfully there, there has to be a desperation and a passion in your heart. I'm hungry for you, hungry for you. I have come to the table to eat. I'm thirsty for you, thirsty for you. I have come to the waters to drink. Now tarry and not let you go. That's just the part I wanted to sing for you to hear. Like Jacob, Lord change my life. Not through superstition, but through exact exegesis of truth. Let me not move around just saying I am a Christian. No results or results once a year. Not bringing glory to the name of the Lord. No. And then, not just succeeding in your spiritual life alone. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And God had blessed him in all things. Don't sit down and justify mediocrity because you are doing well spiritually. No. You must embrace the entire counsel of God. There is only one thing that is greater than the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. Are we blessed? Divine intervention. Daniel chapter 3. Let's study scripture. Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. My goodness. God is changing someone's life. Daniel 3 from verse 23, please. Very quickly. Daniel 3, 23. And these three, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace follow carefully we are reading to tati then nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire follow carefully they answered and said unto the king true o king he answered and said lo i see four men lose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no heart and the form of the fourth is like the son of god nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said shadrach meshach abednego ye servants of the most high god come forth and they come hither then shadrach meshach and abednego came forth of the midst of the fire uh-huh and the princes, watch this, governors, captains, kings, counselors, being gathered together, saw this man upon whose bodies the fire had no power. There are men like that. Men whose bodies the fire had no power. Nor was an air out of their head singed neither were their coats changed nor the smell of fire had passed upon them as a result 28 
ne King Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach. I don't know his name, but I know those who represent him. I will name him by their victory. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and has changed the king's word. A king's word can be changed though. Yes, sir. Oh, I vow you will not rise. A king's word can be changed. And yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. 29. Look at the victory that this brought to the name of the Lord. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. And the king promoted Shadrach Meshach, Abednego, Joshua Selman. Have you forgotten the Bible says this promise is unto you and your children, your children's children, as many as are far off whom the Lord shall call. What is divine intervention? Write very quickly, please. We have a lot to do tonight and we have to rush. Divine intervention is said to occur when God steps in by God here we mean the God of the Bible Almighty El Shaddai when God steps in over the affairs of men causing positive outcomes to happen and turning negative situations around divine intervention happens when God steps in over the affairs of men causing positive outcomes to happen and turning negative situations around ultimately bringing glory to the name of the lord ultimately bringing glory to the name of the lord don't forget to add that so when god steps in over the affairs of men causing positive outcomes to happen and turning negative situations around ultimately bringing glory to the name of the lord galatians 1 24 and they glorified god in me through the excellency of his wonder working power upon my life they glorified god in me john 15 verse 8 herein is our father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples There are times in our lives, in our families, where we will require divine intervention because the help of man, we will get to a point where the help of man can fail. The Bible is not careful as to the limitation of the help of man and the frailty of the energy of the flesh. It says, for by the arm of flesh, the Bible declares, no man can prevail. Are we together? Why do we need inter divine intervention? Because Satan and his cohorts, listen carefully, Satan and his cohorts are determined to thwart the purposes of God in the life of the saints. The Bible lets us know that there is a real devil. John 10.10 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy look at it very carefully that means the thief has no business coming around a life until there is something to steal there is something to kill and there is something to destroy then the bible says i am come that ye may have life and that they may have it more abundantly satan is determined to see that the purposes of God over the life of the saints individually and then corporately as a body that God's divine purposes are thwarted and so he does that listen carefully he does that by introducing 
negative circumstances to our spiritual work and then our destiny work in general so you begin your work of faith and either through wrong decisions on your own part through ignorance and so on and so forth for many of you who have listened to my teaching on the mystery of deliverance it's helped the body in no small way i teach there that there are three principal channels listen carefully there are three principal channels from scripture through which demons and satan attack and buffet the saints number one covenants 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 the legal system of the kingdom number two disobedience number three ignorance these are the only three ways from scripture anyone at all whoever faces any attack from satan anyone at all who becomes a victim of the assaults of satan one or more or all these channels were the doorways he used to access your life i repeat one covenants the strongest of them all two ignorance three disobedience hallelujah and so the devil will bring negative situations around our lives they can come through the ministry the negative ministry of men they can come by manipulating systems and structures look at jesus jesus came to the earth to become a portrait a pattern man to help men see and know god's intent number two he came as perfect theology correcting our ideas about god number three he came to fulfill that role of a mediator through his substitutionary sacrifice to the end that men may be saved from his birth there was an attack there needed to be a divine intervention are we together now yes an innocent young virgin whose life was interrupted because a savior was about to be born that was not enough because of jesus they killed his age mates two years and below women cried because the devil was looking for a destiny to destroy the moment he announced that he was messiah people systems were orchestrated by the devil to fight him the religious leaders the political leaders the government of the day came into unity to fight him to a point where they were willing to release an armed robber someone who was already confirmed to be a nuisance to society let barabbas go but let this one be killed satan's determination to kill jesus was so high God had to incorporate it in the strategy for victory. Satan will leave no stone unturned to see to it that my destiny and your destiny, if allowed, becomes shredded in pieces. Listen, just because you've given your heart to Jesus Christ and you are sincere and well-meaning does not mean the devil will leave you and say, I'm aware there's the mark of the blood on you. No, no. He left Jesus for a season. Came back through Peter. Came back through Judas. On the third day when Jesus was going to arise, they locked up the grave, sealed it, and there were men who were seated. And the Bible says the angel came with power, rolled the stone and sat on it. Jesus resurrected. He left and the men came together. They said, look, um something is wrong let's come together and re they received money and lied that the disciples came and stole his body that's how determined satan is to make sure that destinies never go forward it is not strange and it did not start with you satan's antagonism towards us and our families did not start with us it's, it's a vendetta that predates our coming it's been an ancient war anything that brings glory to the name of jesus anything that advances the purposes of god is satan's business invited or not so when they were dedicating you as they lifted you like jesus was lifted it's not only members that came for that child dedication the devil was also hearing let me hear what this priest will say about this oh lord this child called joshua selman i lift him up before you 
let him be a blessing to the nations and the devil said what did you say i had blessing now i'm interested not because of what else you said that means there is something about kingdom come in his life you become an intentional project listen carefully oh why don't they like me who did i offend all that statement is just a superstitious talk the condition listen the qualification for an attack is that you are born the moment you pass through the womb of a woman you are qualified enough for an attack then when he sees you giving your life to jesus i hope you know demons witness these things lord jesus i give you everything and they are watching and you are rolling on the ground rolling in the house of god and saying my heart is yours my life and my destiny they know satan was once in heaven he knows the implication of genuine surrender he knows you are making yourself usable and he says do you know what let's isolate this person and twat and rubbish the purposes of god in his life and can i tell you provided you are still wearing this mortal body somewhere in the equation of your life you will fall short of obedience somewhere in the equation of your life through ignorance there will be some level of access until you learn what you need to know you will be a victim of the ignorance of it so satan will cash into that moment this is why we need divine intervention it was a system of advantage that was programmed by god's wisdom so that if by any means through ignorance through wrong decisions it is on the strength of mysteries like this paul can say we know that all things even something that should make you fail there is still a provision in the economy of god where you can be delivered someone shout amen, amen. yes sir so when you say you are a christian you are not saying you are a follower of a religion whose founder is jesus no you are saying you are one who by the privilege of god's grace one you have been made a partaker of the life of god justified are we together in christ number two you are saying you are one who through spiritual understanding you have been surrounded with mysteries like chariots these are the forces that help you to walk in victory experientially these forces of the kingdom continue to cancel away every negative prophecy over your life let's see what that family will become they are right except that when you bring out one mystery one arsenal from that spiritual toolbox you can end something that was supposed to be so one of those mysteries in addition to the much you have received is called the mystery of divine intervention god did not leave us without his presence he did not leave us without his backing listen carefully there are three levels at which we encounter the power of god number one i need to say this before i begin to explain a few things number one the first level is a personal encounter where we meet god as a person an encounter that is the highest level you receive power from that level god directly number two there is a dimension of God's power that is programmed in principles. You don't need to know him. You don't need to believe him to experience that dimension of his power. The moment you are compliant to and with the principle, for instance, you can be an assassin or an armed robber and still sow during the rainy season and your crops will grow. It's the dimension of God's power that sponsors that growth. But it was programmed in principles. You don't need a relationship nor an encounter to enjoy that dimension of his power. This is the dimension that many unbelievers have tapped into. Business principles. They have built systems, structures. They have built a very civilized society based on those principles. Even though they may not honor the God that powers that principle. Are we together? So the first is a personal encounter with the God of the Bible. Second is obedience and compliance to principles. Principles work because at the back of them, there is an investment of a dimension of God's power. And then the third way we receive power in this kingdom is through covenant alignment with men and women. Covenant alignment with men and women who God has trusted with certain graces. Direct encounter with God compliance and obedience to principles 
then covenant alignment with men and women. I just needed to chip that in so that you'll understand what I'm about to explain. Are we together? The mystery of divine encounters. It is on the strength of these truths you access the power of God and you begin to walk in such level of victory. One level and dimension of victory to the other. One level of victory. And you see, by this, your life shows in truth that the victory of Christ over sin, over death, over Satan was absolute and true. Creation is waiting for the richness of the manifestation of God's power and grace in and through your life to validate the reality of every claim that Jesus made in and through his finished work. That means I can become a poor representation of the victory of Christ through the plethora of defeats that my life command. My life can be so defeated, it does not look attractive to be a Christian. I can misrepresent the purposes of God. So every time I contend for superior dimensions of these mysteries, it is to the end that we become empowered and then we become trophies, if you would use that expression. That men can look at our lives and say, no, it pays to subscribe to this government. Are we together? In business, we teach that the greatest way to market is to tell the truth. There's no fear when you are telling the truth. Is that true? When you package and you lie, you are afraid of the truth being discovered. So if we are marketing a God to our world, we are marketing Jesus Christ, and we are telling the world He is the way, He is the truth, and He is the life, they will say we may not be able to see Him, but let's look at you who are seeing Him, and let's look at what He has done to you. From the assessment of your victory, the quality of your life, it is safe for us to now conclude if this your Jesus is a better alternative to the charm that I've been using. If this your Jesus is a better alternative to this God I'm serving. Nobody lives better for good. Nobody lives best for better. So if we are selling a Jesus to our world and letting them know that he is savior, he is mighty, the ancient of days, we must be able to present him in a way and manner that dumbfounds principalities and powers. It is on this strength, the Bible says, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10, to the intent. This is why he's blessed us so richly with all these mysteries. To the intent that now, unto principalities and powers in heavenly places, might be known by the church, his bride, his body, the manifold wisdom of God. Are we together? Yes. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. As can now give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see Do you know why we teach this? We teach these truths. Number one, because God loves us and He wants us to experience the highest level of victory that our obedience can afford us in this side of God's kingdom and in this side of eternity. But number two, we do these things because there is a world that is watching and they are depending on the testimony of God's grace upon our lives for the decision that affects their eternal destiny. Are we together? Have you seen marketers of products? Look up, please. There are a few people here, some of you may be, you know, company owners, and you have all kinds of products and services, and look the level of training that goes in 
to teach the marketers because you are about to defend the image and the interest of a company you are marketing a product that probably expires after six months or after two years and look the skill that goes in make sure you're well suited make sure your communication is is very articulate make sure you smile whether you are tired or not look at all that skill we employ the people give them a salary motivate them and send them and even when they see their classmates or their loved ones or their brothers on the street they are not even ashamed. they are so proud of what they are selling and yet the validity is just six months the validity is just two years but we are selling something here that has the eternal destiny of man listen carefully it is truly evil to refuse your life from commanding certain levels of results because by doing it you are the the destiny of millions are depending on your results so if you truly love god don't just say i love god you must contend for superior levels of results let your light so shine before men i need to put this in perspective because many times when they hear preachers talk like this um there is a spirit of religion that will usually want to fight people when they teach to empower people once it is not a talk about jesus and a direct talk about holiness and righteousness respectfully speaking a lot of people frown at it and they feel you are wasting people's time no we teach the whole counsel of god everything together they will weave themselves and add up to the revelation of the christ and the glorification of the same we have been marketing jesus wrongly that's why the world has been slapping that gospel back at our face we need to reinvent our strategy come up with power come up with results nobody runs away from what works are we together so I need to say this because there are many people who want to receive these truths but the spirit of religion can loom around people's hearts and not let them to be equipped and they go blindly with zeal that does not have knowledge oh I want to serve Jesus and they die like chickens because they are not equipped with the requisite level of spiritual knowledge that keeps them in victory I believe in the whole counsel of God. Look the kind of bride that Jesus is coming for. Come and I will show you the Lamb's wife. And he showed me a city equal in length, equal in breadth, equal in depth. No exaggeration. That is the Lamb's wife. That is the bride that he's coming for. He's not coming for some lopsided bride. There is no bride who does not adorn herself very well on the wedding day. There is no bride who forgets her makeup, forgets her shoe, and just comes to stand. No matter how much you are in a hurry. If you want to present yourself as that bride, get serious about every aspect of your spiritual life. Get serious about every aspect of your destiny. If God tells you, I want to use your resources to glorify Jesus, then ensure that those resources are to the degree that can command kings. Can I tell you this? The arrogant world that we live in will depend on a high level of results for the kings of the land to hear you. Ordinary people can hear you no matter what you are saying. But our target is not just the people. We also need the kings because the kings have influence. Look what happened to Zacchaeus. One encounter with Jesus saved many people who he had defrauded. Are we blessed these are principles of kingdom advance we have a series on that but for now it's important for you to submit to embrace the whole counsel of god there are demons there are arsenals of darkness hear me brothers and sisters they are going to come and attempt to attack your life but you need the truth of god's word the bible says write this down psalm 11 from verse 9 the b part Proverbs 11, I meant to say from verse 9, the B part. It says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Through knowledge. Submitting to spiritual knowledge is indicating your interest to truly be delivered and to walk in victory. So divine intervention is real. It's a spiritual arsenal that must be part 
of our equipping as believers is part of the forces that make us matured and help us thrive and reign in life and tonight very quickly i'm going to give us four keys four keys that command divine intervention in the life of an individual in the life of a family use these keys and you will triumph bringing glory to the name of the lord bringing honor to the name of jesus christ are you ready key number one prayer key number one the first key that makes for divine intervention you want to see the power of god come to change negative circumstances over your life you want to see the power of god come to establish positive outcomes in your life to the end that jesus be revealed and be glorified the first key is prayer the priesthood ministry of prayer psalms 18 please give us the first six verses we'll do a few readings so please be patient psalm 18 from verse 1 to 6 i will love thee o lord my strength next verse the lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer my god and my strength in whom i will trust my buckler the horn of my salvation my high tower we're reading to verse 6 and then i'll mention a few verses we'll just jump to them i will call upon the lord who is worthy to be praised so shall i be saved from my enemies uh-huh the sorrows of death compassed me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid verse 5 the sorrows of hell compassed me about and the snares of death prevented me verse 6 in my distress i called upon the lord and i cried unto my god and he heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him even into his ears very quickly jump to verse 14 14 17 and then go to verse 40 for time's sake yea he sent out his arrows and scattered them and he shot out lightnings and discomfited them verse 17 he delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me for they were too strong for me go to verse 40 thou hast also given me the necks of my enemies that i might destroy them that hate me next verse we're reading to 50 please quickly they cried but there was none to save them even unto the lord but he answered them not 42 then did i beat them small as the dust before the wind i did cast them out as the dirt in the streets uh-huh it says thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people and thou hast made me the head of the hidden a people whom i have not known shall serve me 44 as soon as they hear of me they shall obey me and strangers shall submit themselves unto me we are reading to 50 the strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their close places the lord leave it and blessed be my rock and let the god of my salvation be exalted it is god that avenged me and subdued the people under me he delivered me from my enemies yea thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me thou hast delivered me from the violent man two more verses therefore i will give thanks unto thee o lord among the hidden and sing praises unto your name verse 50 great deliverance giveth he to his king and showeth mercy to his anointed to david and to his seed forevermore deliverance listen to me in my distress i cried he didn't just come i called him in prayer the ministry of prayer is very very powerful write this down for reference acts chapter 12 please from verse 5 is a popular scripture here to 11. this was peter when he was bound kept in prison here's what the bible says peter therefore was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto god for him as a result um herod now wanting people to come and kill him the next time and then verse 7 says that behold an angel of the lord in response to prayer 
came unto him a light shined in the prison he smote peter saying arise and his chains fell from his hands uh-huh and the angel said unto him guard thyself and bind on thy sandals and so he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me we we'll read down to 10 let's go to 10 very quickly the bible says when they were past the first and the second word or gate they came to the gate that leaded to the city which opened unto them of his own accord and they went out and passed on through one street and forth with the angel departed from him last verse the bible now says and when peter was come to himself he said now i know of a shorty that the lord had sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of herod and from all the expectations of the people god does not just deliver you from men he delivers you from expectations are we together but that happens at the instance of prayer in acts chapter 16 when you read from verse 25 down to 34 the full text we may not read everything the bible talks about paul and silas are we together on account of a lady who they delivered who used divination to bring money for people and now one thing led to the other they were in the prison give it to us please acts chapter 16 from verse 25 here's what the bible says at midnight pay attention Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them 26 suddenly my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by your deliverer is coming your deliverer is standing by please keep the scripture suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately how many doors financial doors health doors ministry doors business doors doors of your spiritual growth when it is a divine intervention it's not a few doors all doors open all doors open all doors open and everyone's band was loose 27 and the keeper of the prison awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open he drew his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled now follow the result of divine intervention but peter cried with a loud voice saying do thyself no harm for we are all here uh-huh and he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling as a result of that divine intervention he fell down before paul and silas and brought them out and said sirs what must i do that is it to be saved that man's salvation was at the mercy of the result that intervention would bring every genuine intervention in the bible eventually led to the salvation of men and drew men close to jesus let's finish up he said believe on the lord jesus christ the one who now caused that intervention and thou shalt be saved and it will now affect your household and they spake unto him the word of the lord and to all that were in his house are you seeing now one divine intervention from the prison now the man is saved and his entire household and he took the same and he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized he and all his straight away last verse and when he had brought them into his house he said meet before them the same person who flogged them is now feeding them and rejoiced believing in god with all his house whoever you want to lift lord you can live through me whoever you want to bless lord you can bless through me whoever you want to save 
Lord, you can save to me. The salvation of a man and his entire family, not just depending on a crusade, depending on someone's results. But it came through prayer. Apostle James taught us in chapter 5 and verse 13. He says, if any of you are afflicted, let him pray. The moment you sense that there is an affliction, you came back home, your children are sick, your husband returns back and he says, I don't know what is happening in the office. You lost money in business. Everything gone. They collected your land, your property. These are events that require divine intervention. Your first port of call is to begin to pray. This is why God gave us the prayer language of tongues. It's not a Pentecostal issue. The Bible says we have a limitation. The limitation is that we do not know what to pray for as we ought to, but the Holy Spirit. Ah, he knows, oh, he knows how to make intercession. So I lock myself. While I am praying, my mind may be unfruitful, but there is the intercessory ministry of the Holy Spirit. Prayer. Praying in the Spirit, but not just praying in the Spirit. Word-based prophetic declarations. I'm showing you how to provoke intervention. You cannot take the Word of God out of the equation word based not superstitious prophetic declarations word based prophetic declarations two scriptures we're still talking on prayer isaiah 43 and verse 26 believers learn this 43 26 isaiah put me in remembrance he says let us plead together he says declare thou that thou mightest be justified my hand is able to save my hand is able to lift, but I'm waiting for you to declare. Hmm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies, anointing my head with fresh oil. My cup runs over. You are declaring. I have no covenant with death in the name of jesus i declare as for me and my house you are making declarations because you are seeing storms rising you don't keep quiet when storms rise the worst thing to do is to be silent hear me i'm speaking to you because there are people storms all around your life when they woke jesus christ he did not discuss with the storm peace be still your spiritual life suddenly your fire for prayer down your passion for the word down favor down everything down you should know that you are surrounded that there is something that is the time to open up your mouth i decree and declare in the name of jesus the lord is my light and salvation this is not just a pentecostal thing it's a formula for victory Declare ye that thou mightest be justified. Oh, I reject death. I reject death in the name of Jesus. Don't feel bad and feel that's how this one said it and died. That's none of your business. You speak. You do your own part and declare over your destiny. I choose life. I set before you life and death. I choose life, I choose health, I choose victory by the Spirit of God. Thousand shall fall by my side, ten thousand by my right side, but none shall harm me. With my eyes will I see the reward of the wicked. I arise and shine because my light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light, their kings to the brightness of my rising. For my shame I received double. Where I've been deserted so that no man help them please. Passes through me. I become an eternal excellency. A joy of many generations. Prayer. Listen. Please sit down. The moment believers learn this world over. 
the moment you see an unfavorable situation in your life you know it is the devil because along with that situation will come the spirit of depression and the assignment of depression is to keep you silent listen to what i'm telling you i'm not a medical doctor i'm speaking as a man of god i know that depression has an assignment to keep you silent satan is the master of the flesh realm so this is how my life will be i thought this will work i had a dream and i thought the job will come and you now keep quiet and the angels are saying look at this there is a law we are ready to move god is ready help them please god is ready to move Psalms 107 verse 2. These are the arsenals of victory. Psalms 107. Please very quickly. Let the redeemed of the Lord, if they are truly the redeemed, don't just think so. Don't just wish so. Say so. Let the lifted of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Are you learning now? You return back and there is a medical report that is disturbing. Just when that is happening, your child brings a result. After spending so much on his school fees, you see an evil report. Are we together? The moment that is happening, you just hear that your investment has crashed. You are a politician. They told you, okay, this is supposed to be your position. You are a man of God. You come to church and it looks like everything is going down. That's not the time to be quiet. And that's not the time to attract sympathy. You are the first prophet of your destiny. Go and shut your door. Remove your CEO regalia. Put on that priestly robe. Someone blast in the spirit in one minute. I won't be silent in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, listen, believers hear me, hold on, hold on. Do you know that many believers allow tragedy to mount until it presses them down? That's when they resort to God as a last option. And I will not be silent. I will always Listen, an evil report is happening. Your children are going haywire. As the man, you are not just ahead of the home for nothing. Wear your priestly regalia while your children are sleeping. Walk room by room. You are laying hands upon them, not my house. I build a spiritual fortification by prophesying. I decree and declare the foolishness of faith. I engage it. The righteousness of faith speaks from this wise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I will help you. Come and meet me tomorrow. And you come tomorrow and say, well, Who asked you to come here? This favor. Just when you are going, your car hit someone. Just when you learn to read the signs don't wait for evil to stay don't be along with evil attack it from infancy don't be along with evil attack it from infancy hallelujah 
you go to bed in the night and you have a funny dream that you know already shows that there is an attack that the spirit of death is following people in your family listen don't just wake up and write it in a jotter and, and then when it happens you say, no get up and say no way in the name of jesus I, if it followed my father and my father's father i call as a priest and a king and a priest what makes declaration listen it was it was god's servant bishop david oyedeko who said no matter how mad a man is he will not enter inside fire by mistake and say it's confusion no matter how mad he is when he sees fire he says he makes his angels wings and his ministers flaming fire you're sleeping and someone takes your name to a shrine for political reasons oh let this person die or let this person not win you don't have to go to the shrine right from where you are listen believers hear me this is not just some spiritual jamboree the times that we live in it will be risky to not know these truths and to not engage them your life literally hangs upon these truths let the redeemed of the lord say so please sit down please sit down let me challenge you i want to challenge every family here as much as god grants grace provided you and your wife are in agreement set one day this week even if it's for 30 minutes hold your hands walk around that house identify anything that does not look like christ zoom your tongues to it scatter it as if it does not exist yes sir yes sir no my womb will not give birth to armed robbers as a woman you lay your hands or sit down and watch things go bad Just help those under the anointing there is a strong anointing in this place because this is a message for the body of christ divine intervention comes on the wings of prayer a prayerless church no matter what else you have is a powerless church a wordless church no matter what you have is a powerless church the ministry of prayer and the word are the foundations of the true church listen to me i'm not creating a doctrine out of this but let me challenge you obtain grace from god to wake up in the night conquer slumber the night time is when kings win is when we establish victories you're walking around your house in the night the lord told you you'll be a senator the lord told you you'll be a governor the lord told you you'll be a ceo and there are forces sitting down making decrees you don't need to fight them go to your closet this is how kings reign people of god hear me with every sense of humility that's how we got here I'm not telling you cunningly devised fables. Everything about your finances is dying, scattering. You are not lazy. You are hardworking. They are stealing from your shop. They are cheating you. They are lying. Counseling is not the solution alone. Go back and pray. There is an evil force wanting to discredit God in my life. I attack you in the name of Jesus. Listen, I don't promote the devil and I don't mean to market the devil, but I have seen many demons. 
I have seen many spirits by the privilege of my calling and the apostolic office I have been exposed to the realm of the spirit I understand scripture I have been well mentored by fathers of faith and veterans of the gospel the things you are hearing are not cunningly devised fables don't ignore it you will spend your lifetime paying the price we live in an evil world your portion will come to you by insisting from the days of john until now the kingdom suffered violence it is a violent that will take it by force can i tell you this there is no african family that is immune to witchcraft by default it's a lie if not by bloodline by territorial connection when we pray like this we do not negate the finished work of christ we rather stand in partnership our prayer is our participatory role to establish it here and now listen as powerful as god is he did not cast sin out of men he did say sin i cast you out there are rules of engagement in the spirit as for me i've made up my mind god gave me this mouth not only to eat but to create my destiny and i insist for my life for this ministry silence is not just shouting and jumping around no 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 no. an intentional approach to your growth take responsibility listen body of christ thank god for the vessels god has given us but we must become serious and mature to become the first prophets of our destiny go and lock your door pray for me pray for me is good but you must take authority over your situation by the power of the holy ghost The mystery of divine intervention give this message to anyone you know and you love please sit down the first key is prayer for as long as i live i will never stop praying for as long as god has anointed me i will never stop praying for as long as this ministry God grants me the privilege of leading this ministry. We will never stop praying. For as long as I live, I will never ignore the word of God. No matter where, whatever lifts you is what sustains you. Don't throw it away. Don't throw this Bible for money. Don't throw this Bible for awards. Hold it together with the awards. This is it. The alternative to this is charms and witchcraft and all kinds of troubles that come with side effects. I found your word and I did eat it. It was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of the Lord abides forever. Please hear me. The only guarantee to our fulfilling the purposes of God as we await the return of Christ with honor is to get serious with this scripture. Please hear me. You are seated here and there is an attack on your spiritual life. Take it seriously. Don't just say one day I'll think about it. I am telling you now, if you have been praying to confirm whether it's an attack, I'm answering that prayer by the grace of God. It's an attack. I hope you still love me this night. Please pray. Please pray. P pray for me is good, but pray in the name of Jesus Christ. And when you are praying, I'm not being harsh on you. I'm just shouting because of the passion burning in me. Listen, by the grace of God, don't be praying and browsing. Except if the Holy Ghost speaks to you and you are looking for scriptures quickly. Keep this thing aside. This thing is a blessing. But in the name of Jesus Christ, show your dominion over it by keeping it on one side when you are praying. You can't be doing too many things and focus. Lock the door. Sometimes sincere people can come to distract your prayer and study life. How are you? Are you at home? Peace be unto this. As politely tell them, sorry, I love you, but I'm spending a few minutes. If they love you and they love your destiny, they should excuse you. Look, live by values. Otherwise, you will crash your spiritual life down. 
You are praying with fasting. Turn every plate upside down in your house. Lord, there is a spirit attaching my influence. There is a spirit attaching my fervency for you. It didn't used to be like this. What happened to my prayer fire? What happened to my word fire? I sleep by 7 p.m. I wake up by 9 a.m. in the morning. Something is wrong with my spiritual life. depression speak I reject it ah, I know I lost one billion in this investment my company is in trouble I know that this has happened I know they diagnosed me with fibroid or cancer or whatever I know that there is a situation things don't seem to be adding up but let me die believing you you return back you study scripture and now the advantage we have there are many people who have gone through the labor of putting the required scripture you need just a little search online and you can find scriptures people have paid the price already if you have an office or a prayer room surround it with powerful scriptures remove pictures of when you were small and keep them aside and put scriptures while you are praying you turn this light firing from one direction Please listen to what I'm telling you. This is the key to victory. Do you know why I'm telling you this? So that when you rise, when they ask you, yes, you will say it's God's grace, but you won't tell lies. You can't say, I don't know what I did. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. You must register your presence in the realm of the spirit. I say, touch not. For me, for my children, for all that surrounds me, touch not. Do you know, prayer can become a habit. You are praying and you just stretch. For stretching for two minutes and waking up, you are not fully awake, but the realm of the spirit and demons will suffer just because you are ah, before you turn back. Is any man afflicted? Let him pray. Can I tell you this? I don't mean I don't mean to create controversy or trouble. I've come to this city in peace, but let me tell you this. I made up my mind. Everybody under my roof must serve my God. Listen carefully. You can't be under my roof at my cost and do what you want to do. No. No. If the owner of the house is praying, you should pray. Don't get up and say whatever. No. It's a, it's a, it's a personal uh, um, revelation. I'm not saying it must be so for you. So that you don't allow people to bring all kinds of familiar spirits and loiter your house. Okay, this is how we pray in this house. You are welcome. 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. If there are special cases, that's all right. But as much as possible. The point of neglect is the access point for demons. Where you neglect. The point of neglect. Many of us started raising our children well. But when they became teenagers, in a bid to honor them for maturity, we started subtracting spiritual values. You take away prayer and give your child a car, you did not help the child. Let him pick the prayer before the car key. I don't know how I got here. Please sit down. Let's, let's talk about We have to finish. So number one, prayer. Please pray. Pray. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. We do not know the evil that confronts us day and night. But we can pray. It's our zone of safety. It's the formula that the Father gave us. Pray. The moment you detect things around your life, that are not lining up with the purposes of God. The moment you see that the agenda of God is being interrupted, souls are not being saved in and through your life. You are a man of God and for two weeks you made an altar call. Nobody came out. Don't laugh and say it's alright, everybody is saved. That's not, there is no such thing as that. The same way the poor you will always have with you, the unsaved you will always have with you. 
the day I spend a week in my life and my life does not save a sinner I will go on a retreat and repent before God what is the anointing for one week Sunday to Sunday nobody came to Jesus through my life nobody got healed through my life no demon was casted out nobody understood the kingdom through my life you must take that responsibility authority comes with responsibility number two very quickly the second key that provokes divine intervention in the life of believers is praise with understanding praise as an instrument of warfare praise with understanding as a weapon three scriptures very quickly psalm 67 from verse 5 god is helping us tonight help us media let the people praise thee O god let all the people praise thee we're reading to verse 7 then let the earth yield her increase and god even our own god shall bless us uh-huh it says god shall bless us and all the earth shall fear him at the instance of praise it was a few years ago god gave me i don't like dancing you would have noticed i'm dancing and all of this there's no grace for me there bible says every man should abide in his calling but not when not when i am alone with god you don't dance because you can dance you dance because he's a weapon he prays I learned the power of praise praise works wonders psalm 22 verse 3 psalm 22 verse 3 but thou art holy O thou that inhabitest you make praise your habitation that everywhere there is genuine praise it attracts the attention of god how many of you know that if you want to invite the commissioners in a state you want to invite the permanent secretaries maybe the attorney generals and the rest instead of inviting all those people one by one invite the governor in his capacity as the governor as he's coming the entourage that comes with him somebody who told you yesterday he won't come on hearing that his boss is coming in the capacity the full capacity of his office that's what praise does there are many things you don't know you need breakthrough lifting favor let praise go up let praises rise from the inside from the inside may you Psalms 18 verse 3 where we read earlier said I will call upon the Lord who is worthy or deserving of praise by that formula of prayer mixed with praise so shall I be saved that every time I pray it does not just stop at prayer many times when we pray angels come but Paul and Silas taught us that if we want God directly when you are done praying begin to praise and he comes himself are we blessed have a selection of powerful worship and praise songs every television in your house should have a flash drive behind it with a special selection per season per moment when it looks like you are downcasted oh apostle i can't sing people have sung for you already get their songs and while they are singing you repeat after them the parts you don't know don't worry god understands jump to a part that you know and sing yes sir let me show you something judges judges chapter one from verse two we have to hurry up we're about to pray judges one from verse two look up please they were going to battle and the lord said judah shall go up first that judah 
Judah means praise. Because I have delivered the land. It is praise that will take delivery. Watch this, verse 3. Hmm. And Judah said to Simeon, you know what Simeon is? Simeon comes from the Hebrew word hear or to hear. That's faith that comes by hearing. So praise told faith, come and escort me. I need to receive something. It says, come with me into my lot that we may fight against the Canaanites. Praise calls faith. Let me do this with understanding. And likewise, I will go with you into your land. And faith went with praise. As a result, verse 4. And Judah went up. And the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hands. And they slew them in Bezek. Ten thousand of them. Do not downplay what praise can do. Perfected praise with understanding. Write your prayer requests. The issues of concern on the ground. Put a worship song. Roll before God there. Get up and begin to dance and dance. Papa Hagin met Bishop Oyedepo. And he said, We mentored you on faith. And yet God has brought you great increase. How did this happen? And Bishop Oyedepo replied him. And said, By the grace of God, sir, I danced everyone into this tabernacle that you see. When you pray, then you praise. Praise is powerful. Let, it, let the praise of God not go away from your mouth. Sing praises with understanding. Sing praises with understanding. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Raise a song when you go back home. You wake up in the night and you are walking around. And you are carrying the letter. They just sacked you. Present it to God. Drop it on the ground there. Dance before him. Africans, we do that a lot. Those in the West don't see much of that. But Africans, you know what happens during weddings? There are this group of people who can wear their uniform and have these talking drums. It happens in most cultures. Especially the Yoruba culture. They see you and they begin to call your name and praise you. You don't want to give them money. They call your name and say something about you again. Senator, remember the building you did. You want to enter the car. They remind you. You made a statement that you love all of us. And they put pressure on your integrity. And before you know it, you reach down. Unplanned. Listen. A woman's dance removed a prophet's head. As prophetic as he was. Herodias danced her way to a decision and option that was given to her. And her evil mother told her to remove the head of John the Baptist. I can tell you because I've done it myself. There are miracles. You go and try what I'm telling you and see. Not showmanship. No. Lock yourself. You and your maker. Cry and roll before him. Lord, I bring before you my political career. I bring before you my spiritual life. I bring before you this need. And begin to pray and roll. Write the name of your business. Write the issues of concern. Write the issues that is plaguing your spiritual life. What kind of believer am I, oh God? You said we'll dream dreams. I don't have any dreams. And if I have a dream, it's a demonic dream. Write it down. Pray. And see what will happen that night praise number three the third key that provokes divine intervention is sacrifice sacrifice very powerful sacrifice seed faith is very powerful seed faith is not just about money pay attention Psalm 50 and verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me 50 and verse 5 psalm they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice let me tell you this ask any great man whether in the secular or in the kingdom there are certain heights and certain results you can never command under the sun until sacrifice comes from you 
when you read psalms 126 from verse 1 to 6 it says when the lord turned again the captivity of zion we were like them that dream jump to verse 5 please verse 5 says they that sow in tears there is a kind of seed you don't laugh that's when you are giving isaac if it's ishmael you can laugh but when you are giving isaac you know this is isaac you sow in tears it says you shall reap in joy verse 6 he that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing bringing in the sheaves now let me confess and admit to you that i know that the issue of seed has gone through all versions and all kinds of imbalances and abuses here and there i know i know that people have been victims of all kinds of manipulations with the teaching on seed but just because a truth is exaggerated or misused does not mean it is not truth when truth is applied within the boundary of scripture and in truth and righteousness it works wonders you've heard me share my story for many of you who have listened to my teachings i remember a time when god needed to shift me i was already in ministry and god was already helping me i remember when god gave me an instruction that one day he was going to speak to me to carry a seed and take it to god's servant bishop david Oede. i won't tell you the seed and that morning god gave me that instruction i got up got the available flight and went down cut the long story short when i was done with everything i had to do as i came out to enter the car so i'll go and look for somewhere to rest and return the next day the holy spirit told me to place my hand on the ground there at canaan land ground when i placed my hand he said son from today you have entered the overflow anointing not everybody will be honest to tell you the story behind their glory but please don't be mistaken behind every glory you see there is a story and there is a mystery behind that story sacrifice read the bible about kings who slew their children and an indignation rose against them and war ended sacrifice when done with understanding is powerful I have made sacrifices this ministry has made sacrifices you cannot imagine and i do it with joy and with understanding let me tell you what happens to your seed when you sacrifice first corinthians chapter 15 from verse 35 we don't have time but let me see if i can touch a bit on it please understand this mystery so that your sacrifice will become profitable many give in the body they just give just because a man of god challenged them to give sincerely so but in this kingdom results are governed by the understanding that sponsors that action if you just act without understanding if you really get a result it's just the mercy of god but some will say how are the dead raised up so he's talking about resurrection please pay attention and with what body do they come paul insulted them i will insult you that which thou sowest is not quickened except it dies follow carefully so there is a relationship now between resurrection and death are we together next verse please let's save time media help us please next verse but god giveth it a body as it pleased him and to every seed its own body hmm. all flesh is not the same flesh but there is one kind of flesh of men there is another flesh of beasts and of fishes and of birds uh-huh there is also a celestial body and a terrestrial body but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another uh -huh. two or three more verses there is one glory of the sun and another of the moon the glory of the stars and one different from another pay attention their glories are not the same we'll stop at 43 he said 
so also is the resurrection of the dead it is a dead bodies the dead you sow it in corruption but it is raised in incorruption last verse it is sown in dishonor and it is raised in glory it is sown in weakness and it is raised in power this is a mystery one time i was spending time with the lord and the word of the lord came to me and gave me a mystery behind sacrifice the bible says our seeds have the power to die and have the power to come back to life only jesus demonstrated that the ability to die and come back to life that means it is possible that i can tie any season i do not like to my seed and as i sow that seed if that seed dies everything connected to it must die are you getting the point now i can take the season of disfavor i can take the season of shame and tie it to my seed with understanding and sow that seed when that seed dies that season also dies and the bible says there is a unique expression of the law of seed faith and sacrifice in this sense because when you sow you don't only reap more of what you sow you can change what you want to see still by sowing you can sow favor and reap more favor but you can sow shame and exchange it for honor that means i can take all the unfavorable seasons in my life ministry business career and by faith you drop it and expect that season to die and all of a sudden a new season begins to open as your seed grows it's a powerful mystery you see why it's dangerous to steal money in the house of god because you don't know what season someone is trying to kill and if you do not allow that seed die you thought you just told 10 naira look at gehazi you now see what happened to gehazi he thought he was just collecting money he was collecting leprosy just because the leprosy left naman did not mean it left the earth he was still there waiting for a volunteer and a man's greed pushed him i have ended seasons in my life ended cycles in my life ended patterns in my life by the power of sacrifice with understanding it's a practice that i will continue to do for as long as i live discernment again you've heard my story that i was in just many years ago and i went to buy sugar cane and i saw two women it was not much old women and i pleaded with them that let me i just wanted to honor them they were mothers i said please let me pay for them they also wanted to buy it they were beckoning on me trying to remove their money from their wrappers i said please let me pay for you and then i paid for them and the women began to bless me quite honestly i didn't hear what they said but one of them looked at me and said my son forever walk upon gold sacrifice works when it is done with understanding many of us have not risen to a new level because we are not ready those who are unbelievers call them they will tell you they know whether you are born again or not meet great people christians or non-christians they will admit to you that there must be a sacrifice dimension in the equation of your success when you see a man rise beyond the threshold know that there was sacrifice there whether it is a demonic sacrifice or it is a godly sacrifice i assure you no man can rise beyond a threshold just like that look at the father when the father wanted many sons in glory he carried his own son jesus his own son the father did not say i stand as the holy one seated upon an ancient throne be free from sin even when jesus turned to him and said eloi eloi lamak sabachthani father 
this eternal relationship that has never been severed he said for the sake of the harvest that is coming i want to end the reign and the dominion of sin and not even your face will make me change my mind sacrifice you know why abraham is called the father of all nations we sing and jump abraham's blessings are mine he said if you are abraham you will do the works of abraham abraham take now thy son thy only son whom thou lovest imagine a man dragging his son abraham where are you going i'll see you in the evening and the son says father where are we going he says, just follow me obedience is better than sacrifice and he's carrying him up the son says i see the wood i see the fire where is the lamb and he said jehovah jireh do you know what it meant for abraham to lay his son and the child will be saying father what did i do if i sinned against you won't you tell me to say sorry abraham imagine what you would go back and tell the journalists imagine what you would go back and tell the pressman imagine his marriage was it was obviously going to end what would he tell sarah your 25 year old project all the mockery and the shame because a spirit spoke to you let me tell you what made god to swear a blessing on abraham and god was watching romans chapter 4 there's no time but when you read there it tells you the contemplations of abraham that abraham had planned that when he kills isaac he would beg god to bring him back so that he would take him back to the mother and give him in peace i've obeyed you now please save me from the trouble that is waiting for me at home sacrifice there are times that your seed will have to be the weapon that ends certain yokes in your life there are times not emotional things with understanding lord i'm tired of this level i am tired of this level of grace i'm tired of this level of oil i'm tired of this level of growth i'm tired of this level of hearing you sacrifice he says let no man trouble me for i bear in my body the mark there is a mark there are people who are recognized both by the realm of the spirit and this realm i've had the privilege and i don't mean to insult your pedigree forgive me if i sound arrogant this call upon my life has exposed me to many successful people i've had the honor and the privilege of praying with many people and every time i meet great people i don't just talk as a man of god i like to listen to their stories what happened and i'm listening sometimes they are laughing i'm not i'm not i'm not interested in all the somewhere in the story there will be a punchline. and then i did this and then god gave me an instruction i did this it may not all be money there was a time many years ago that god gave me an instruction I prayed for 72 hours non-stop. My eyes did not see the sun. I didn't know whether it was morning or night. I did not check my time. Don't trivialize 72 hours. Even if this is what you are doing for 72 hours, it is a lot of work. 72 hours. Because we needed to end some seasons and step into certain seasons. I was teaching the school of ministry student yesterday we we're discussing the anointing <clears throat> and i was telling them that when you have a little extension wire connected you can hold the extension wire with your hand and even if there is a spark it will not be serious but when you see a high tension cable there are people who held it and remained there till they dried up that's how men can become you can become an extension wire that has little or nothing coming from it or you can become a high tension cable in the spirit the difference sacrifice you don't just look at people and say be healed it's not everything that is a gift there are things that are rewards you will have to stay with the spirit sacrifice of prayer sacrifice of the word the discipline and the constraints 
I don't want to sound arrogant to begin to tell you the things that I have done for this kingdom. But brothers and sisters, hear me. Many of you are in need of interventions. There are some of you following online. You want to break cycles. You want to break patterns. God is speaking to you. Not without a sacrifice. It is true. Sacrifice. The prophets of Baal. Remember at Mount Carmel. The last card that they used to bring Baal down. Was sacrifice. Elijah said I give you morning till evening. Do whatever you know to do to invite him. They tried everything. They started by prayer. They danced around. Remember nothing happened. When evening was coming. They say there's something we know about the realm of the spirit. If Baal will not wake up to our prayer. If he will not wake up to our singing. Give us a knife. And the Bible says they started cutting themselves. Have you seen traditionalists do these things? They make incisions because they want to invoke powers. They cut themselves like animals. And Elijah said, your God is sleeping. When it was now time, Elijah said, get out of the way. The time for the evening sacrifice. That was the time Elijah called God. He didn't just stand and say, God, come. Mm -mm. He waited till it was the time of the evening sacrifice. And he said, bring these bullocks for me. He sat on an altar, put sacrifice there, poured water, and called upon the God who answers by fire. And fire came from heaven, licked everything. When your life becomes an offering and a sacrifice, then you walk in signs and wonders. Then God will give you a grace and an anointing, not just for a church, not just for a city, but for nations. I tell you the truth, anybody who loves you sincerely will not lie to you. Not everything is just free that you pick up on the ground there in Jesus' name. There are sacrifices that follow certain graces. Graces and anointings and possibilities are in levels. There are graces for regions. There are graces for nations. There are graces for continents. All of them come by sacrifice. Can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism? The last key and then we pray has god blessed us tonight so number one the prayer ministry of the believer two praise three sacrifice four the prophetic the fourth key that provokes divine intervention is the power of prophecy isaiah 42 and verse 22 please get ready to pray isaiah 42 and verse 22 and this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. They are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and none delivereth. They are for a spoil and none sayeth restore. The prophetic was given as a spiritual advantage to help believers rise and ultimately advance the purposes of god the bible says in hosea chapter 12 you read from verse 11 down to 13 hosea chapter 12 11 to 13 let's go to verse 12 very quickly jacob fled into the country of syria israel served for a wife and for a wife he kept the sheep 13 and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt it was the lord that brought them but he used a prophet and by a prophet was he preserved by a prophet the prophetic ministry is powerful don't mind the imbalances here where all students in the school of the spirit growing but if you ignore the prophetic there is a limitation to the dimension that you can rise in life when jesus christ was born as the logos of god there were two people who spoke to him one was a priest called simeon another was a prophetess called anna there is a reason why they spoke when jesus was about to begin his ministry there was a prophet called john you call him the baptist he was the prophet at every major season in his life there were prophetic voices that spoke to him prophecy is powerful it reveals and it creates the revelatory dimension of prophetic strengthens your faith 
it gives you hope it gives you direction but the most superior dimension of the prophetic is the creative dimension of the prophetic where it makes what has no business happening to happen by this time tomorrow he said are we together for time's sake i'll stop here we're going to pray the mystery of divine intervention the lord needs to arise over families the lord needs to arise over individuals there are many of you who came here bleeding and crying and saying god please speak to my situation i'm tired of this situation god has brought you a word tonight it is a spiritual arsenal that you must add and teach believers around you that as we sojourn in this our faith work we will meet with circumstances that defy science circumstances that defy intellect we will need to outsource help from a realm that is beyond the three-dimensional realm at that point you will need divine intervention please rise up on your feet two prayer points for tonight and then we're done prayer point number one father arise arise and wipe my tears arise and take away shame and reproach from my life please pray with understanding please rise up and pray please pray lord arise arise in the name of jesus christ over my spiritual life over my finances over my destiny arise in the name of jesus christ over my family lord arise over this issue of concern please pray outside pray online make sure you are praying arise so called and let your enemies be scattered. Hallelujah. Second prayer point, we are going to obtain grace. The Bible says, now that you know these things, happy are you if you do them it is not just knowledge but it is doing at the point of action that's when the integrity of god is committed you're going to obtain grace grace for prayer grace for praise grace for sacrifice grace to honor and receive the prophet lift your voice please and pray obtain grace from heaven in the name of jesus the son of the living god Someone is praying. Someone is obtaining grace. Lord, grace to be on fire. As far as my prayer life is concerned, as far as my work study life is concerned, in the name of Jesus, grace to offer the sacrifice of praise as an incense of worship and as an instrument of deliverance and victory. Grace, the power to lay down, the power to lay down, the power to bury season, the power to end negative seasons in my life, in my family, in the name of Jesus. And then, Lord, I open up my spirit to the ministry of the prophetic. Let it shift me. I open up my spirit to the creative and the revelatory direction of the prophetic. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please listen to me. Don't be in a hurry to leave. I want to speak over your life. Prophecy is very powerful. I am a product of prophecy. When a prophetic word, truly by God, comes your way in one moment, one moment, 
a prophet said by this time tomorrow when he said so another man who the king leans on said even if god opens the window of heaven might like this happen he saw it but he did not step into it the bible says despise not prophesying we are made by the word we are made by prophecy we didn't make ourselves there were voices that became prophetic ladders for us to climb to where we are and god has granted us such measure of grace to also lift others please listen to me every word you are going to be hearing i want you to believe i want you to receive you don't have to kneel down let your heart be opened truly don't just say amen before i make that prophetic declaration very quickly we have one minute for you if you are here and you are saying apostle on hearing you speak the holy ghost began to convict me to make my ways right with jesus there's no point wasting time i know that i need jesus i'm tired of running my life at my own terms i need to make it right with jesus maybe a family maybe a young person maybe an old person all alike following from zaria all across the world here in abuja aside from those outside and the various overflows you can come in front of your projector screen very quickly i want to give you one minute wherever you are take that bold step come and stand before me here very quickly let's honor them as they do so quickly don't wait for someone to come be the first summon that courage and come please come come very quickly very quickly come you're all i want keep clapping you're all I've come to jesus you're all Are you coming? The Lord is calling people. Win that war tonight. Outside, online, all over the nations. We bring you Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, the deliverer, the mighty one. Keep coming. God bless you. salute all of you who are here standing before me all who are watching by television from the screen or wherever i want to pray for you thank you for coming you are worth our sacrifice you are worth our time of stay here we do this because we love jesus please if you can lift your right hand let it be from the depth of your heart you're not reciting a poem and you who is following online by television you're following on the internet i want you to pay attention make this decision wherever you are let jesus know that you mean business with him say after me lord jesus i love you and i believe that you are the son of god tonight i make you my savior my lord my king i declare that the power of sin satan and the grave is broken from my life from today i am a recipient of the life of god i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign i go forward ever and backward never amen father thank you for these ones i stretch my hands towards them and i pray according to scripture and by the authority of the word i declare their sins forgiven I declare that they are partakers of this life in the name of Jesus. They have become members of this great fold. And I pray in Jesus' name that the grace that lifts, may that grace lift them. The power to walk in victory, let it be released upon you. You go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus. Thank you for making this great decision. Now I'd like you to follow the gentleman. There's a gentleman holding a placard. All of you, you'll see a gentleman holding a placard to your right or to your left. Please follow them very quickly. They'll just have a word with you.
and you'll be back to your seat very very quickly let's celebrate them one more time as we prepare to receive the prophetic word hallelujah are you ready to receive we have been commanded to bless Balaam said we've been commanded to bless in the name of Jesus every pit you have found yourself in tonight I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic and I speak to you no matter how deep that pit is come out of it now come out of it now come out of it now every negative situation surrounding your life your family your career in the name of jesus my god and your god my king and your king my deliverer and your deliverer i decree and declare over your life be free from that yoke now be free from that yoke now i stand upon the grace that god has given me and the grace of all our fathers of faith that we have so partaken of by god's grace and from this corporate anointing i speak to you every door that has refused to open over your destiny we speak to that door be open now whatever has affected your passion for god your prayer life your word study life in the name that is above all names fresh fire from the throne let it land on you now number two anyone praying and anticipating your downfall so that they will rejoice and say we said it in the name of jesus christ shame and reproach will be their portion forever Can I pray for you? He said, Master, we have toiled all night. He said, Nevertheless, everywhere you have tried and tried and failed, I call upon the God of heaven, who is the helper and the lifter of men. Go back and succeed. Go back and succeed. Spiritually, go back and succeed. Financially, go back and succeed. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare, if there is anything connected to bloodline, connected to foundations, connected to ancestry, connected to territory, holding you back and will not release you to go, I cut that chain right now forever. I prophesy to you, be blessed in the name of Jesus. I declare, you rise to a position of influence that will surprise you access to systems and structures in the name of jesus christ hear me believers anyone who fights you goes down instantly and everyone who needs to be used by god in this season as an instrument of deliverance to bail you out of any kind of shame and reproach in the name of jesus i call for their ministry over your life enjoy the ministry of angels enjoy the ministry of men enjoy the ministry of angels enjoy the ministry of men enjoy the ministry of angels enjoy the ministry of men in the name of jesus by this time next week you will stand here and testify of the wonder working power of god go back to a realm of deliverance a realm of lifting a realm of fire command results command results supernatural results in the name of jesus christ every veil covering your glory so that you are just moving I tear that veil in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that has closed scripture towards you, 
so that even though you are opening your Bible, you are not seeing anything. I declare, let the scrolls be opened. Let the scrolls be unlocked. Let the book be opened. In the name of Jesus. Every spiritual laziness trying to destroy your life so that you become a victim of the onslaught in this season. In the name of Jesus, I declare, those spirits are far from you. And let me prophesy upon you, the spirit of death, whether by accident, whether by sickness, whether by plane crash, whether by the activities of wicked men, whether by enchantments and evil incantations, may it be far from your habitation. Everything that you have seen in your visions, you know it has been released from heaven. But for whatever reason, your hands have not held it. I stand by prophecy in partnership with the Holy Ghost. I push it to your hands. I push it to your hands. I push it to your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please wave your hands in one minute and give Jesus praise. Father, we honor you. Father, we honor you. Give him praise. Wave your hands. Let it be a wave offering. Lord, I wave because I believe you. You have done it and I give you praise. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please listen to me. Next week, Sunday, by the grace of God, as much as God has granted us grace, as a family of faith again, we are going to be waiting upon the Lord in fasting. Praise the name of the Lord. These are spiritual exercises that mature us. It's not a waste of time. Exemptions as always are nursing mothers, pregnant women, and those under any kind of medical constraint. But for everyone, anything from two, three, you can break for the sake of time because people come here. But please make sure you fast. You can listen to this teaching again and pray. There is a mystery that I want to share. God has brought us here to lift everyone and to see to it that the purposes of God are established. Are we together now? Your hands to Jesus. Bless his name tonight. Lift your hands high above your head and worship his majesty. Father, we bless you. We bless you for your mercy. We bless you for your presence. Someone giving God thanks tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord, the doer of wonders, the lifter of men. Thank you, Spirit of the living God, the one who glorifies Jesus in the midst of his people. Thank you for your presence, your power, your glory, your wisdom. Now ask him for an encounter tonight. Father, give me an encounter again by your word, by your spirit. Give me a very definite encounter tonight. Shabrando Sketepa Lakosata Preskia. Give me an encounter by your spirit. In the name of Jesus, affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. One more time. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Father, we pray. 
that you will change us, you will build us. Let the revelation of your word come with power. And in the name of Jesus, may we ascend realms and dimensions in the spirit tonight. Empower us even by your spirit. Tonight, on account of your word and on account of your spirit, let weeping come to an end. Let pain come to an end. Let failure come to an end. Let negative seasons come to an end. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. In Jesus name. I'd like you to welcome someone by your left and right. And then please be gloriously seated. God bless you. Good evening everybody. Help me appreciate in our midst tonight, Reverend Akila, House on the Rock, Joss. Thank you, sir. We honor you. We appreciate you so greatly. Thank you. I welcome you again in the name of Jesus Christ for all who are connecting by way of internet. The Lord will do you good tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I... I thought very deeply about the service um, while I was away ministering and it just occurred to me again and it came with a renewed passion how that it is very important that God's people be enlightened. These the times that we live in are not times when you should entertain ignorance. Hallelujah spiritual ignorance especially as we approach the close of the age will mean defeat are we together spiritual ignorance will mean that an individual may never be able to represent the purposes of god in his life so now is not the time to entertain ignorance whatsoever we must be ever opened and ever ready to access light Light that grants us grace to be in command. Light that grants us grace to reveal Jesus. Hallelujah. And this, as you have learned again and again in this place, is the assignment of a teaching priest. In fact, let me tell you this. Let me, let me describe for you the jurisdiction of my commitment to you as far as the ministry of the word is concerned. Number one, my first assignment to you and over you by God is to create an atmosphere that sponsors supernatural encounters. Please do not forget this. My first assignment is not to teach the word. My first assignment is to labor with the spirit and ensure and insist that the atmosphere remains ever conducive for encounters. Encounters with the spirit of God because there are some things teachings can, will not do. It will take a direct encounter with the spirit of the living God. So the atmosphere of worship, the atmosphere of prayer, all of these is to be able to make the atmosphere, the spiritual climate conducive for encounters. Number two, enlightenment. My second assignment over you by God is to be able to grant us access to high level spiritual illumination. Please, I want you to listen carefully. Hallelujah. So that you comprehend the ways of God, you comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom. Because in your enlightenment is the manifestation of your authority in the spirit. Authority in the spirit is light dependent. John 1 5 the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not that means for as long as you are in darkness there are some things that will not be possibilities in your life hallelujah 
the bible says in ephesians 4 18 that when we are in darkness and our minds are blind we are alienated from the life of god and that through the ignorance that is in our hearts so line upon line precept upon precept here a little there a little doctrine after doctrine truth after truth teaching after teaching i owe you by god and based on the covenant of my call and my service to see that as much as god grants grace it is delivered to you with accuracy exactitude and precision the whole counsel of god the whole counsel of god means that your growth will not be lopsided as a result of prejudices and biases that you will be holistically built i will teach prosperity like there's no other topic to teach i will teach character like there's no other topic to teach i will teach the ministry of the spirit like there's no other topic to teach i will teach on influence like there's no other topic to teach i have no particular biases to any area of the of the kingdom life at all provided it is scriptural and it makes for the holistic development of the saints when i teach it i will teach it with passion that is the assignment of a teaching priest are we together so that in addition to your godliness in addition to character you are able to find a life of meaning and purpose to represent jesus holistically the third assignment that i have over you is the assignment of empowerment in partnership with the holy spirit i owe you to supply you by the spirit all of the spiritual resources that make for your strengthening and your overall empowerment the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle it says your strength is small empowerment spirit soul and body mental empowerment that comes by providing superior ideas spiritual empowerment building capacity that's why we took our time to pray and fast it doesn't have to be a special occasion or a special request it is part of the spiritual growth process of any serious believer hallelujah and then of course i owe you support any and all kinds of support to be able to guide your steps your walk with god to see to it that your christian experience is not without help and is not without support and finally i believe that i owe you purpose to be able to connect all your training and your dealings and to help you find your place in life and destiny let me tell you my assignment is not complete over you if the only thing you keep learning is just mystery after mystery with no point of application there must be a connection between what you are learning and where you should use it hallelujah purpose is what gives value to pursuit every time you seek his power you seek his face his glory to know his ways it is to an end there has to be purpose connected to this prosperity without purpose becomes a burden revelation without purpose becomes a burden and if i may add one more responsibility i owe you mastery and efficiency i owe it to you that you not only come into a comprehension of the truth but that you come to a point of mastery and efficiency he says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully hallelujah and for as long as god grants me strength you can be sure that i remain ever committed to seeing that these various dimensions are supplied for adequately hallelujah but you also owe yourself an assignment there is a participatory role that you have to play your first your first assignment is genuine connection and submission to learn your first assignment is not writing your first assignment is not receiving your first assignment is not shouting amen your first assignment is not falling your first assignment is not even testifying your first assignment is a commitment from the depth of your heart that for the sake of the kingdom 
for the sake of my destiny for the sake of those connected to me for the sake of the mandate upon me to reveal Jesus I submit myself to learning Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 Acts 2 42 the Bible says and they continued steadfastly with resilience with endurance that means that continuation was not convenient but it was a covenant they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers hallelujah so you owe it to submit yourself to learn number two you owe it to apply the truths that you learn you must obtain grace there is no teaching that happens here that we just wrap up by the last point we say okay with these few points of mine i hope that you now understand god bless you see you next week we always end every meeting with prayer and among the many things we seek to do is to obtain grace it says now that you know these things happy are you if you do them you need the engracing of the spirit because it is not by might nor by power the bible says it is by my spirit paul said i know what to do but to do it i do not have that ability he says with my spirit i serve the lord but in the flesh i see another law walking in my members he said oh wretched man that i am who shall deliver me from this body of death so you can know what to do but the engracing to do it may not be there hallelujah praise the name of the lord and may tonight be one of such nights where you get to learn the precepts of the spirit again with power and with wisdom you are equipped by the power of the holy spirit by the way let me ask you how many of you can truly testify that your life is changing i'm not talking of this church thing that you say just so that you don't annoy a man of god if, if you are not changing listen the problem is not what you are hearing the problem is you that's why i'm confident enough i know the power of what is coming to you are we together if you are not changing there are many reasons one you are not born again possibly two you are not engaging the truths that you are learning or three you are not even connected sincerely you can come here like a football fan coming to watch um, a, a spiritual match and you are happy entertain yourself coming to see faces and share the grace and go back or you can come here carnally minded desiring something else other than jesus let me tell you sincerely the recipe for frustration is that your eyes is in any other thing other than jesus i give you a guarantee sooner or later you will be frustrated the longevity factor in the house of god is as you stay gazing on jesus if you look for trouble you will find it if you look for inefficiency you will find it if you look for mundane carnal things it will distract you unfortunately so you must set your eyes on jesus lord i am here for you i am here for your presence i am here for an encounter hallelujah speak to us in the name of jesus christ help us oh god to rise and to stand strong i want you to pay attention to what you will learn tonight because i believe that this is a much needed revelation especially for the times that we live in i woke up a few i think a week or two ago and just to look through online papers and i saw that they were showing the picture of a little baby and it's purported that she's the eighth billion eight billionth baby on earth and it didn't excite me because you see i've read my bible and i interpret life from the lens of scripture go and read the bible and find out what happens every time men begin to multiply from the book of genesis every time men begin to multiply greed begins to multiply self-centeredness begins to multiply the fight for resource control begins to multiply are we together yes so with increase comes the burden of maintenance 
that means that there are things that if you do not know i i hate to be the bearer of bad news but based on intelligence and based on scripture we are about to see the greed of man stretch to borders we have never seen in modern history we are about to see people act like beasts in selfishness and wickedness like we have never seen that means people will easily fraternize with the realm of the spirit to if possible clear everybody out of the way and make sure they have access to this praise god i have a little beautiful aquarium and they put all kinds of fish all kinds of fishes there and one time i found out the tiniest of them just disappeared i didn't see them again and then i said something must be going on here i mean these guys have coexisted in peace what would have happened i found out that the larger the larger fishes will cluster around an area and seem to eat and then go back and I couldn't find the tiny, the tiniest, you know, the very small ones again. And I got sad and I said, I hope it is not what I am thinking. I hope because I travel, <laughs> I traveled for a while. So when I came back, I didn't find two. And I said, what in the world is this? For me, it just gave me a very powerful I said, how could this fish be living together in peace, eating together, celebrating together, and just a few extra days beyond their normal schedule of food, and you come back and you don't find the two smallest ones. They are gone. What was in the mind of the larger fish as they ate the smaller ones? They said, look, I love you. I, you need to know that we are, we are together. We are together in this. And... Um, it's not that I really want to destroy you, but that is just what happens with increase. Now, as funny as this sounds, it is not a joke. Are we together? Yeah. Because that is exactly what happens. The moment you have an increase in the population of men, and then you have wars across territories, that means there is limited resource. Are we together? We have all kinds of things happening, climatic conditions that are, you know, destroying productivity. It is important for us to wake up. Otherwise, we will be taken by surprise. The extent of wickedness and greed that we see in our world right now, just because you are born again and you love God, make no mistakes about it. Not everybody is born again. Just because your conscience has not been seared with iron and you can still be empathetic towards people, you will be mistaken to believe that everyone is like that. There are people who will kill without thinking twice. Even if you are their relative, there are people who will, if people can sell their soul to the devil, is it you they cannot sell? Hallelujah. That means we need to hold on. We need to lay hold to all the forces that guarantee our victory, even at such times. Hallelujah. By reason of what I do, usually when people are kidnapped or something happens, you know, people would easily reach me and say, Apostle, pray. And I am amazed. You cannot believe the stories that I've heard through the years. Brothers and sisters kidnapping themselves, arranging. Are we together? Husbands and wives arranging evil. Look, the heart of man, Ba, is desperately wicked. And rather than flattering yourself that everybody likes you and evil will not come near your corridor, let me advise you in advance that you wake up and find the forces that secure you. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord open your eyes and your ears. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.